Hello, my name is Jean-Michel Arnal. I'm an anesthesiologist. I work in ICU. I want to welcome you in this hospital and now I'm going to show you something very interesting. We are here with the patient and we are going to see the use of intelligent ISV in an ICU patient. This patient is 69 years old. He was admitted for a septic shock after a complicated uh, abdominal surgery. So now he is stable and we stop sedation and the patient is slowly uh, waking up so he is starting to be active, triggering the breath. And Televent ISV is a full closed loop mode of mechanical ventilation available both for passive and active breathing patients. Namely, there are three different controllers. One ventilation controller that adjusts the minute volume according to the end tidal CO2. So, to run the ventilation controller, we need an anti-dial CO2 sensor. The second controller is the oxygenation controller, which adjusts PEEP and FiO2, mainly according to SpO2 measurement. So we need an SpO2 sensor. And the third controller is the ISV controller that adjusts the combination of tidal volume and respiratory rate according to the respiratory mechanics and for this we need the measurement of the, ex the respiratory mechanics, namely the expiratory time constant and we need a third sensor which is a flow sensor positioned at the white piece of uh, the circuit. Now if we look at the screen we can see on the top this is the ventilation controller and the target for the ventilation and down the oxygenation controller, PIP and FiO2, and the target for oxygenation. When we do the initial settings in Intelivent ISV, we have to uh, activate first the controller, minute volume controller, PIP controller, FiO2 controller, then to select the patient condition. It can be normal lung, chronic hypercapnia, RDS, or brain injury. By setting the lung condition, the ventilator will change the default target both of antidol CO2 and SpO2. Then there is a quick win mode that is not activated in this patient yet. And we have some option, the possibility to have automatic recruitment maneuver and the limits regarding the PIP, the minimum PIP and the maximum PIP that we, we would tolerate. Finally, there is the possibility to limit the increase in PIP by using the heart-lung index. So, the main task of the doctor in Intelligent ISV is to decide what are the lung conditions and to adjust the target in terms of antidol CO2 and SpO2 according to the patient. So we can see it on the screen. Currently, the antidol CO2 of the patient is 31 and the target is between 32 and 40 millimeters of mercury. So every day during the run, the doctor in charge has to adjust the target. Am I satisfied with this target for this patient? Currently, this patient has a gradient between antidote CO2 and PaCO2, which is 8 mm of mercury. So it means that with this target, the target PaCO2 is 32 plus 8, so 40 mm of mercury, 40 plus 8. 48 mm of mercury. So the target PaCO2, 40 to 48 mm of mercury. Regarding SpO2, the target SpO2 is 93 to 97, which is fine, I think, for this patient. But if I want, I can switch it to higher value or to lower value, depending on the patient. So it's very important on a daily basis that the doctor adjust the target and that the only thing we have to do, all the rest will be managed by the ventilator to keep the patient 
within the target. The minute volume is adjusted according to the untidal CO2 if the patient is passive and according to respiratory rate if the patient is active. So in a passive patient, if untidal CO2 is high, the ventilator increases the minute volume. In an active patient, if the respiratory rate, spontaneous respiratory rate is high, it will increase the target minute volume in order to increase the pressure support. So on this screen, this is what we call the medical screen with all the details of the functioning. You can see the actual value of antidol CO2 and the actual target antidol CO2. But because this patient is active, we see also the respiratory rate of the patient and the target respiratory rate. So we see, for example, that actually the patient respiratory rate is 17 within the target. So there is no adjustment of the minute volume. Regarding oxygenation, the actual SpO2 is 96% and the target is 93 to 97. So the patient is within the target there is no adjustment of PEEP and FiO2. When we monitor the patient, I think the most important is to check what is the FiO2. Monitoring SpO2 is not necessary anymore because SpO2 is a target, so it will be always within the target, but the dependent value is yes, FiO2. So if FiO2 increase, it means that something happened and we should be careful. The second very important value to monitor is the expiratory time constant, which is one number to assess the full respiratory mechanics. So it's very convenient. With one number, we can see if it's a more restrictive patient or an obstructive patient or eventually a mixed condition. Now, for the nurses, there is a simplified uh, panel uh, where we can see the important value, antidol CO2 and SpO2 in big number, and also the trace, and also uh, the target, but without the full pictures. So usually the nurse like to use more this kind of panel. Here also, we can see the dynamic length. The dynamic length represents the value of inspiratory resistance and compliance in a pitcher. So the shape of the lung depends on the compliance. The lower the compliance, the more square will be the lung. The shape of the airway represents the resistances. So if there is increased resistances, we will see a red line within uh, uh, the bronchial tree. And this is very convenient for the nurse because they know that it's time probably to suction the patient. When the patient is active, we can see uh, the draft ram, which represents the spontaneous activity of the patient. So even if we don't know exactly what are the normal values for respiratory mechanics, we, we can have a fair assessment or of the normality or an abnormality of the respiratory mechanics by looking at this picture. So now we are going to see the quick win. This patient is active, so we may consider winning the patient. You see here, you have to activate a module that is called quick win, and then there is a panel uh, where you set the quick win. So you are going to set the readiness to win parameter, and the time in which you want the SBT to occur. If you don't want SBT during the night, you, you can set, for example, I will have SBT only between 8 a.m. to uh, 10 p.m. For the quick wind, there are different phases. The first phase is to verify the readiness to win criteria. So actually, the ventilator is verifying the condition to go to the spontaneous breathing trial. So of course, 
it can screen only the respiratory condition. So FiO2, PEEP, tidal volume on predicate body weight, pressure support, RSB, the ratio between uh, tidal volume and respiratory rate, and the spontaneous respiratory rate. When all of these parameters are within the ranges, a counter will start for what we call the observation period, to know how long this parameter has been fulfilled. And during this whole process, two things occur. The target antidol CO2 is shifted to the right in order to be more tolerant in terms of ventilation. And the target minute volume is progressively decreasing in order to progressively decrease the pressure support. But it is safe, meaning that if there is a decrease in pressure support and the respiratory rate increase above the upper uh, value, then it will increase again the target minute volume in order to increase again the pressure support. So there is an automatic reduction of pressure support and go back if it's not well tolerated by the patient. After the observation period, we can set the duration of the observation period, then the ventilator will switch automatically to a spontaneous breathing trial and we, ha we have to set the uh, PEEP and minute volume during the spontaneous breathing trial and also the duration of the spontaneous breathing trial. At the end of the spontaneous breathing trial, if it's successful, then we'll have a message to consider to extubate the patient, of course, if the extubation criteria are fulfilled. Thank you.